Hello, everyone. Uh, my thanks to the organizers for this opportunity to share a little bit about um, the power of vaccines, um, pneumonia fighting vaccines. So um, we all know what pneumonia is. It's, it's an infection of the lungs typically caused by viruses, bacteria, and fungal infections. So on this slide, I give you a tile of some of the uh, pathogens that are responsible for pneumonia, some of the common and less common uh, pathogens that are responsible for pneumonia. What you see here is that um, the viral pneumonias as well as the bacterial pneumonias are the commonest. And as um, Dr. McCulloch said earlier on, pneumonia affects um, largely individuals in the extremes of life. But we can't also forget that even among um, non-immunocompromised healthy adults, pneumonia can be a threat as well. In the US, for example, half of the deaths from bacterial pneumonia and pneumococcal pneumonia occur in people ages 18 to 64. So that really brings home the, the life cost perspective of pneumonia. Um, I think this slide had been shown before. Um, what we really want to illustrate here is that um, there is such variability in the burden of pneumonia across the globe where the concentration of the, of the risk and the, the burden is really in sub-Saharan Africa and um, in, in the global south, so to speak. Um, we want to really um, remember the children that die from pneumonia, right? Every 39 seconds, five, uh, five children die from pneumonia. And the, in 2019, WHO estimated that, you know, more than 700,000 um, um, children were killed by pneumonia. So it remains, you know, a silent killer or uh, an important killer of children. As you can see from this slide, where um, in recent analysis by the um, Child Health Task Force, we, we show um, the, you know, causes of child um, mortality um, across um, 50 something countries that are not making as much progress in child health. You look at the, um, look at the bar graphs and you can see that pneumonia, which is acute respiratory um, infections, which is colored in green at the bottom, um, you know, represents a, a larger share of um, the deaths of children followed by diarrhea and malaria. So even though we have, um, you know, interventions against pneumonia, it continues to remain an important cause of, uh, of death in children. Um, Lee mentioned that we have to look beyond the childhood, um, you know, age group and start talking about the life course. So across the life course, pneumonia is a, a, a threat to health. What this slide shows from the um, healthdata.org from um, University of Washington is that um, the good news, which is that over time, um, pneumonia um, deaths incidents has been declining um, over time in all age groups, but the pace of decline is not as, um, as fast as we want it to be. So um, the WHO and UNICEF um, have have put out the Integrated Global Action for Pneumonia and Diarrhea, which we are all aware of. And um, of the three-pronged approach that they have um, put out for control of pneumonia and diarrhea, um, vaccines are one of the critical um, pillars to, uh, to, to address pneumonia. What this slide tries to show, and it's from the IVAX, um, um, pneumonia and diarrhea progress report, which is a report that IVAC releases every year that tracks our progress on, uh, on these two diseases. What this report shows really is that um, the, um, the vaccine pillar uh, target, which is 90% coverage for each of the following vaccines, pertussis, measles, hib, pneumococcal conjugate vaccines um, is, is the target. That's the Northern Star. But how are we doing with regards to that? Um, besides the, the four vaccines that I mentioned, um, I think the good news within the pneumonia space is that there are additional vaccines for, um, that address pneumonia. So we know that COVID-19 causes pneumonia. So the, the, um, 
the pathogens on the top, you can see have approved uh, vaccines. And then the pathogens at the bottom um, do not have approved vaccines. Just to highlight that um, RSV, which is a very common cause of a childhood pneumonia, has a vaccine in the pipeline, not yet approved, but uh, will be so quite, uh, will be approved uh, quite um, in, the, in the near future. Now, we know that um, pneumonia is an important aspect of the prevention of, of sorry, pneumo um, vaccines are an important aspect of the prevention of pneumonia. I want to spotlight the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, which is one of the most impactful um, pneumonia vaccines that we have. We see that um, uh, recent analysis that looked at um, the pneumococcal um, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine use across the world and um, reported quite impressive um, use of the vaccine. Uh, more than uh, 175 million cases of pneumococcal disease and more than 625,000 deaths uh, from pneumococcal disease prevented by PCV. In South Africa, so coming down to you know, Sub-Saharan Africa where we see that the burden of um, pneumonia is, is, is much higher. In South Africa, the use of PCV has led to between 23 to 33% in reduction of pneumonia in children younger than 19 years of age. South Africa has a very strong um, surveillance system. And so they're able to you know, provide strong evidence of the, um, you know, of the use of um, pneumonia vaccines in the real world. And within that same study, we see that more than 18,000 deaths have been prevented between 2009 and 2016. Beyond the health um, impact of PCV, we have strong evidence about the uh, economic impact of PCV. In the US, for example, the cost averted from using PCV translated to 112 US dollars per life saved. And um, this, this is quite uh, an impressive amount. And several studies have done cost-effective analysis that show that a PCV vaccine is um, cost-effective and cost-saving. Um, so you have the health benefits, you have the economic benefits. There are also um, health systems benefit of, um, of PCV and other pneumonia fighting vaccines. For example, this analysis here um, looked at the immunization programs that deliver um, um, DPT, and of course, in the same in the same um, process, they deliver the PCV vaccine, and um, they they recognize that the delivery of these vaccines prevent, provides an opportunity to deliver a large range of other childhood developmental um, interventions, such as newborn hearing screening sickle cell screening, treatment and surveillance, maternal education around newborn care, and then even tracking early signs of poor growth and nutrition. So there are a variety of benefits and impacts that the use of um, pneumonia fighting vaccines, for example, PCV, will um, deliver to individuals, health systems, and governments. But unfortunately, our progress on um, vaccine access and uptake is lagging. In a previous slide, I showed you that the target for the, um, uh, the GAPD plan really was, is that um, we should be having 90% coverage of, um, of um, pneumonia vaccines um, across the world. Um, for pneumococcal vaccine, which we have mentioned earlier is one of the most powerful um, vaccines of, of those in the, in the pneumonia fighting range, we see that only 48% of children under five currently receive um, pneumonia vaccine, uh, pneumococcal vaccine. This is from the Stop Pneumonia um, Coalition. Many countries have still not introduced the PCV vaccine. And with the COVID outbreak, unfortunately, um, even in countries where the PCV vaccine is, is in use. We've seen data from WHO that shows that there's been backsliding of routine immunization. Um, below here, you see um, the, um, data from the IA2030 immunization scorecard 
that shows that um, we are actually not on track to meet our targets for um, DPT3, for PCV3, for MCV2, which is um, which contains measles, one of the pneumonia fighting vaccines um, as, as well. So um, we were not doing as well as we need to in terms of using the power of vaccines to address pneumonia. Now, in order for us to address the gap in vaccination, we have to think beyond the immunization program. We have to think in an integrated manner. So I highlight here the Child Survival Action Plan, which is a renewed call by um, stakeholders within the uh, child health space to um, pick up from where we, you know, from where we've stopped to end preventable child deaths. And is in this platform of integrated action that I think we have the best, um, um, the, the best chance and option to address the vaccination gap that we are seeing from, um, you know, from, from the previous data. What we really need to be looking at is integrated services. So where primary health care is placed at the center of a comprehensive response. So immunization is part of it, but at the same time, we have to think about IMCI, we have to think about referral. As Dr. McCulloch has said, I'm not going to rehash that again. But the most important thing really is that um, we know that vaccines are effective. We have, we have the vaccines with us. We have the vaccines, although there are some countries that have not yet introduced the vaccines. But then how do we move forward in taking these interventions that are available in countries, available in the global market to bring them to all children and um, all, um, all individuals that need them. So it would require a coordinated effort that you know, touches on a number of things that we already have in the system. So this is really about implementation. It's about implementation. Fidelity is about implementation. Intensity is also about galvanizing leadership. So the first thing we really need to do is leadership. Without leadership and without coordination, um, our efforts will fail. We need to galvanize leaders at the global regional, country, and sub-national level. Some of the, um, some of the actions that you, you have shown from CSOs in, uh, you know, with the small grants are part of the efforts to tell the leaderships in different countries that pneumonia matters and that um, the interventions need to be put in place. We need to also build partnerships. So um, build strong collaborations at the country level. Many times, um, we have a lot of community assets that are not tapped uh, effectively. For example, religious leaders, community leaders can be important um, um, advocates, can be important um, entry points for vaccination, education, even for offering um, you know, a, an opportunity for outreach services to happen. Outreach services can happen in, in, um, in churches, in mosques, if we are able to link in with faith-based um, organizations. So collaboration and looking beyond our usual suspects is very important. The next thing is data and analytics. We cannot address uh, gaps in immunization if we don't know where we are going. Many times the routine immunization data at the country level um, is of, of, of poor quality. You would find um, coverage rates higher than 100%. But when survey is done, you find that there's a big gap between um, routine immunization coverage estimated and the, and, the, and the survey data. So we need better data and anal analytics and monitoring frameworks to show us when we are doing well and when we are derailing from our targets. And with COVID, uh, we can see that there is um, an opportunity to get data real time. So better data systems like immunization registries, uh, birth registries that tell us the children who are born and, and so we can track them and follow them up is really one of the things that we need to prioritize now and take advantage of from the COVID. We also need stronger advocacy, which is what this um, community is all about. Um, advocacy, 
to the political leadership and also awareness at the grassroots level. And um, everything depends on resources and, and um, um, financing. Um, many countries have you know, support from Gavi, from the Gates Foundation and other international partners, but there really needs to be an emphasis on um, national financing, sub-national financing uh, for immunization programs. And um, that the advocacy should really focus not just on awareness, but also on resource mobilization from the, the countries. I think um, bringing all these together are really the, the, the core things that we need to move the immunization agenda forward to address pneumonia and um, you know, begin to make more accelerated progress as, as we can see that we, we are stalling and much more needs to be done. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share this.